Hi, my name is Jana, and welcome to Sunbird Calls 101. I'm going to give you guys a general overview of Sunbird Calls and how to get started with the Calls SDK, um, walking through making a call, receiving a call, ending that call, and checking out the call history, as well as uh, the awesome dashboard studio that's available for you to already test calls today. So what is Sunbird Calls? Sunbird Calls enables real-time voice and video between uh, users in your app. And when you have the SDK initialized and configured, uh, you can build voice and video calling uh, into your app. And under the hood, Sunbird Calls uses WebRTC. So a big thing to focus on is a direct call. This is a, that one-on-one -on -one call between two users. The caller is the one that initiates the call, um, you know, whoever dials that, that outbound call. And the callee is the receiver of that incoming call. And they uh, will receive a notification that they have the incoming call either through an event handler or through uh, an actual notification if they're, say, they're outside the app. And the callee can either choose to accept or reject that call, just like any standard call that you might see between two users. Um, and if that call is accepted, then a connection is created and that's what starts that direct call. So the call is actually a live app once that connection goes through. And you'll see call related events uh, such as ringing events, connection events, and uh, when the call actually ends, you'll see an ended event. Um, and calls are tracked with credits. So if you want to check out your usage or your, you know, your user's usage of the, the calls in your app, then check out the Sunbird dashboard. And voice call credits and video call credits are, are tracked just a little bit differently. So keep that in mind. So for Sunbird calls, we offer it on three different platforms. We have a JavaScript SDK, iOS SDK, and Android SDK. So if you want to build your web app and include calls uh, on your website, you can do that with the JavaScript SDK. Um, and you know, if somebody's making a call from, from the web, they can actually call a user on the iOS or on Android. If, you, if your application has calls integrated in iOS and Android as well. We have prepackaged sample apps ready to go. So if you want to start with one of our samples, uh, it, it's pretty quick and easy to get started there. We have some you know, awesome quick starts um, already available for you. And the Sunbird dashboard, uh, this is where you can manage all, all the information about your application and the users that are inside of it. So, and you can enable push notifications, which is strongly recommended if you have users on mobile side so they can receive uh, calls while their app is in the background or closed. Uh, you'll also be able to see call logs. And again, this call studio is really cool because um, you'll be able to call another user from just right here from the dashboard as a test user and simulate that call and, and test that everything is working for you. We also have a calls API, and this is a RESTful API under the hood. It's really designed to be on the server side. So again, we're, we want you to use the SDKs, the JavaScript SDK, iOS SDK, or Android SDK you know, for web and, and mobile apps. Uh, so if you want to do anything on the server side, though, use the RESTful API. Uh, you'll have an API token available to you. You can do things like listing call users, seeing a particular user's calls. You can manage uh, push notification tokens for, for different users um, on the dashboard if they're, if they're having any trouble receiving a call. You can also list out all the direct calls that are happening for your whole app. So not just for a particular user, but all users. Um, and you can manage some custom items on those direct calls as well. So to get started with the calls SDK, you'll want to configure a few options, particularly things like access to the microphone and the camera, especially for video calling. Um, and then on iOS side, you'll want to enable background modes. So on iOS, they use we use call kit and push kit um, to go over a VoIP for VoIP calling. And then 
on Android side, you'll want to request, you know, maybe Bluetooth access, internet access, um, and then the recording of the audio. And you can also do things like pro using ProGuard to shrink your code. If you want, um, like say you have a video uh, in your app, but you don't want the size of your app to be just, an, you know, very large, you can shrink the size of your code. Um, and you can use an audio manager. So if you want some of that audio stuff taken care of for you, use the audio manager. On JavaScript side, you'll use the media um, to re retrieve a list of the devices that are available to you. And the browsers might prompt your user to access the things like the microphone and the camera. So just be aware of that. On the code side, the first thing you want to do is just initialize the call SDK for your app. Um, you, can, you, ha you must do this before you can you know, connect or authenticate with the user. Um, and then you'll want to authenticate with that user right then. So if you want to uh, create that user, you can create the user on the back end side of things. You can even go through the the chat API, or you can create that user on the Sendbird dashboard. And then in order to receive, the, the big thing here is, is in order to receive calls, that user must be authenticated with Sendbird calls. There's a specific method that has to be called inside the app to make sure that they're authenticated and can receive calls. So it's not just that they have you know, never fired up the app. So that means that Sendbird calls knows that this is a, a real calls user um, and they authenticate with their user ID access token. Uh, and then in the case of uh, iOS, their VoIP push token. Um, and then on JavaScript side, they'll want to establish a WebSocket connection to connect that user. So these are things that are happening under the hood for you, but just you know, remember like to receive that call, they must have first authenticated. And you'll want to register a push token for this user. So the SDKs have options available for you already built in to register the token through the SDK, but you can do this on the back end side through the API if you need to. So here, let's talk about the details about making a call. So there's a dial method and it has parameters like the callee's user ID, you know, this is the user you're looking to call. And then if you want to specify if it's a video call or not, or an audio call, this is when you do that. And you can specify some call options. So particularly for iOS, you want to specify like, uh, and, and JavaScript and anything, you want to specify like the media view, what, you know, what, basically what view am I looking at? And then what's the remote view that we want to show on the screen? And then is your audio enabled right when you're calling? And is the video enabled? So once that call, it, accepts the call that's going to that fire off these established and connected listeners or in the case of iOS delegates. Um, so you'll see those coming through your app. So receiving a call. So when the other user, the callee, receives that inbound call, it's going to fire this did start ringing method uh, or on ringing. You may see those depending on which SDK you're using. And then the, the callee can choose to accept or decline the call. Um, and they can actually do this in the background if they want to as well. Um, and the way that happens typically is, especially with the mobile apps, there's push notifications that come. They deliver that call while the user is not even looking at your app. They can receive the call, you know, push kit, and then on iOS use call kit. That's even like routing to the native device um, call, caller, basically. So you can see the uh, call coming through there. Uh, it's all coming through the push notification. You can customize the text that comes in from the call. Um, and then you can even see the call logs on the physical device itself. Once that call co comes through, the did establish, did connect methods are going to start firing. And you'll see also things like did remote audio settings change. So, you know, now is my audio on? Is my video on? 
Um, and then did end will signal to, you know, either the callee or the caller, either person basically can end that call. So this did event did end event will signal to the person that 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 call is now ended. So hang up. Yes, call dot end. So whoever wants to initiate this can initiate um, to end the call, and then the did end or on ended events will come through. And then you can release and destroy that call view that you showed up on your screen. So for call history, you can use a direct call log list query. And, and that'll list up all the direct calls for that particular user. Um, and you know, you can specify my role. So I'm the actual, I'm the caller or I'm the callee. So I want to see, you know, either the all the calls that I made or all the calls that came in to me. And then, you know, was, were these canceled calls, completed calls? You can, you know, kind of get nitty gritty here on the filtering options. And you can specify how many you want back at one time, like 25 of them. And then if there are a lot of logs, you can fetch additional ones by calling next. We also have webhooks available on the back end side. So you can enable these on the sender dashboard on the settings. Uh, in the calls section, there's webhooks. You can list up the URL that you want webhooks to come to. You can specify which webhooks you want. So you can listen on the back end, you know, how, like which users are making dial events. You can see information in those events, which, um, which calls were accepted. You can see call ID, who the caller was, who the callee was. Um, and if you have multiple applications, it'll list up the app ID in there for you as well. And then you can see when the call ended with this direct call and uh, webhook event. So here's the call studio. Here's just a little clip of it. You go on the Sendbird dashboard and you can basically make another call for another user or to another user that's already authenticated with Sendbird calls. So remember, they have to authenticate first and then you call this user right on the dashboard. And you'll you see on the top left in this screen that the pop-up comes up. It shows, oh, I want my microphone to come on. Um, and it's going to have this little recording icon. So you can see this call is actually going through calling. Um, and then when it connects, you'll see a little timer coming up. And then um, you on the dashboard side or even on the, the callee side, you can end that call. So be sure to check it out and play around with this. It's really a lot of fun. Um, and we have tons of resources available to you. So make sure, you know, check out the API documentation. Uh, if you're on the JavaScript side, we have uh, a quick start guide. We have a video even for you. Um, sample applications, there's samples for all three of these SDKs. Go download and start with the sample. Um, you can get really basic on these um, calling apps or you can have tons of features inside. So be sure to check it out. Thanks so much.